heading out of this episode, Adam's in a tough situation. I know that there is one person I would not want to be in the back of a limousine with, and it is Dexter Crane. That guy's bad news. And Mark. I mean, why did he have to blow the whole deal with the horde? <sighs> I mean, Wiley's peacemaker tactic was going so well, but nothing ruins a show of good faith quite as fast as a sniper rifle. Welcome to another installment of Inside Between. I'm Angelina, also known as ALB. And my name is Nicole Stamp, and we are your hosts. And joining us live in the studio tonight, we have three amazing guests. Samantha Monroe, who plays Stacy, Jack Murray, who plays Mark, and a new face, Loretta Yu, who plays Daisy. Now, have you answered our Twitter poll this week? Our question is, will Adam be able to spread the truth and save Pretty Lake? Vote now on Twitter, at Between Series. Now, on tonight's show, we have some huge spoilers for Season 2, Episode 5 of Between, so if you haven't watched it yet, make sure to go catch up. It's online at citytv.com slash between, or you can watch it on demand. All right, Nicole, do you have your, your game face on? This is it, right here. I was oh, born with this face. Oh, I like it. <laughs> All right, then let's kick this episode off with a little recap we like to call Between in 60 Seconds. We left off with Franny, oh, shooting Renee to avenge Gord's death. But wait, hold up, Renee's not dead? What the? Chuck's cuts have vanished with no scars in sight, and Ronnie woke up fresh-faced after getting in a fist fight with a wall. What on earth is in that injection? Hey, Adam made it out of Pretty Lake. Time to get some answers. And a grande decaf non-fat no-foam extra hot latte. Oh, Liam's still trapped in a trunk. Hope you're okay in there, buddy. Wiley to the rescue. Until Wiley finds out that Liam was a bad guy all along, and he was never going to come back for them. Called it. Now it's up to Adam to save them. Everyone, get a vial. Stat. Wait, where are the vials? Wait, where's Renee? Tracy, how did you lose Renee? Adam recruits bike fix and humanitarian genius Daisy to hack into Horatio's system, much to the dismay of this creepy British villain. 37 character password, no big deal. Minister Miller wants to exterminate all of Pretty Lake, so the group needs to get to the extraction point ASAP. Looks like Renee got her mojo back because she's using the cure as blackmail to be a leader again. Wiley begs Renee for a few vials back, and all that snow looks a little chilly, but the cold never bothered them anyway. Mark, what are you doing there? You ruined the plan. The group extraction is in two hours and Adam just got kidnapped. This plan might not work. Welcome to episode 205 of Inside Between. This is the penultimate episode of the series, so all the plot lines are really accelerating to their huge finale conclusion. And I am very excited to talk about the show with our guests that we have today. We've got three great guests. So first of all, we have Jack Murray, who plays Mark on the show. How's it going, Jack? Pretty good. I had such a great time last time I had to come. Well, we're so happy to have you. Thank you for, for gracing us with your presence again. <laughs> and we also have, actually, I think our most used guest on the show, Samantha Monroe, who plays Stacey Samantha. Hi. This is your third time. This is my third time, and your 60 seconds between the 60 seconds is still my favorite part. But Thank you. So funny. Amazing. I feel like the guests are my favorite part, if I'm going to be honest, but that's really nice of you to say. <laughs> Thank you. And then beside me on the couch, we have a new face, Loretta Yu, who plays computer hacker genius Daisy. How are you, Loretta? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. We're so happy to have you here. I'm excited to be here. I feel like you have really kind of thrown a whole new, you know, uh, twist into the show mm -hmm. because now Adam's on the outside and we know that he's kind of a hacker genius but yeah. you are like a mm -hmm. hacker genius even yeah. beyond what he can yeah, do. Yeah, I'm even better than he is. <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, my job. how did you learn these great hacks? Like, how I do don't you... know. I, I figure she, she does a lot of, uh, she, that's her thing, you know, she her go-to is like computer technology stuff. She's really good at it and she's also, you know, she likes to be a part of the, uh, the underdog team. Um, right you know, helping people out. Did you have to learn a lot of, like, computer techniques that you didn't, what do you, what do you know now that you didn't know before? Uh, I didn't know that you could have a 37 character password. I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, it makes sense when you have very, very uh, important information. You probably want to keep that secret, but that was something that I learned. Sure. Have you changed your own passwords? Have you made them more secure? <laughs> I probably should now. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> when anyone's going to attack me, anyone's going to come after me since I'm the hacker. Right, when I realized you were going to be on the show, I, I like, hid my cell phone because I was like, just in case. Well. It's probably a good idea. Right? Probably for the best. Mm -hmm. So is there like a backstory between how you and, and Adam got to know each other? Um, yeah, well, uh, I kind of made a backstory up in my mind because mm -hmm. that's just sort of the work that I do. But uh, yeah, I, I get the idea that uh, they knew each other from before he moved to Pretty Lake and that we sort of uh, did the dark net thing together and like, you know, found uh, our commonality was our enjoyment in hacking into other people's private stuff. Right. <laughs> Hacking into important government emails. Yeah, yeah. And then I feel like, you know, you're very quick to help when he comes to you and says, we have this problem. Mm -hmm. But then as you learn more, can you talk us through, like, what is that for Daisy? What does she think is happening? Yeah, well, I think she's she's somebody that, you know, she's very, she's turned on by the idea of, uh, of something that's a little bit dangerous. 
Um, and so, yeah, she definitely, she, she wants to help. And she's also, she's a bit of a show off too. She's like, oh, well, if you can't do it, watch this, step aside, son, you know? But then <laughs> once it actually does become dangerous for her and she actually gets a gun pulled on her, then it gets a little too real too fast. Right. Um, yeah, and then we'll see what happens with Daisy and if she if she uh, mans up and decides to come back and help. I'm excited yeah. to see. I have a feeling, I just feel like she's too cool of a character for a one-off. I feel like she's going to be back. I think she's such a humanitarian that it's going to be hard for her to just, you know, walk away and be like, oh no, it's not my problem anymore. Because we know that she cares about PETA and like, you know, carbon emissions and things like that. And she has such a good conscience on her. It's like, I think it's kind of strange for her to walk away, but she might have gotten freaked out at first. Right, fair enough. Well, that's mm -hmm. cool. That gives her sort of like somewhere to go in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, she says this is not my fight, but maybe it will turn out to be her fight after Conflict. all. Conflict. Right? So speaking of not my fight, uh, Jack, mm. so Wiley has this whole plan where she's like, I'm going to be a peacemaker, and you agree to her plan, but then you head up to the hills with your rifle. What do you think Mark's thinking in that moment? Well, I mean, the vials are basically life and death for, for not only Mark, but also for, for Stacy and, you know, other people with in Pretty Lake, so I think, you know, Mark obviously cares about Stacy a ton and, and himself a little bit too, so he's, he's just, made, he's trying to be a backup plan, but unfortunately his plan uh, <laughs> blew up in his face a little Yeah, sure, sure did. Well, we, well, hopefully, you know, things get back on track. Yeah. And for you, I feel like Stacy and Tracy have this beautiful scene where they talk about, you know, the ethics of leaving the kids behind in Pretty Lake. Mm -hmm. What do you think Stacy's thinking in that moment? Um, well, that scene was actually hard to film. Um, plus, Jordy's fantastic, and she seems to be able to just cry on cue. She just cries. It's amazing. Um, and I, I feel like Stacy was thinking more so about herself than, than the kids in that situation, and I can understand that, I suppose. I, uh, for me, that was a really hard scene to film, just because, personally, that wouldn't have been the choice that I would have made. Um, to leave all the kids behind and save yourself, but <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, what's going through Stacy's head, she's probably just really seeing the opportunity to leave and the opportunity to get out and get out of this hellhole that they've been living in for what, 54 days or something like that, Gosh, and yeah. just leave. So. Yeah. Quick what's going to happen if they get out? What happens? I mean, so you, you have a whole different life on the outside. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen for, well, for Stacy? Well, I mean, it's probably not much of a life. Is it? Everyone, everybody in the town died. So I'm assuming the first thing you do is hot shower. Second thing would probably be McDonald's. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and from there, I guess you'd have to either make yourself a new life after that. That would be pretty hard for well, all the kids that get out. Yeah, and what about for you, for, for Mark? I mean, he's a convict. He was in jail before this happened. So yeah. what happens if, if he gets out? Yeah, I guess that's one of the things that makes uh, Mark a little different is that uh, he, he likes being a free man in Pretty Lake more than being a prisoner outside of Pretty Lake. So in terms of, you know, if he were to get out, how he'd behave I mean he'd, he'd be a fugitive essentially and you know perhaps uh, he, uh, he goes rogue and starts making his own justice wow oh my gosh I mean we know he Throwing looks guns. There, you know? yeah just putting it out there yeah. whatever so here we here we go fingers crossed for season three now we have such amazing fans of the show and one of the great fans that we have is our weekly super fan and this week her name is Maya she came to join us all the way from Alberta and Angelina and Maya are gonna have a little chat right about now. Take it away, Ange. Thanks, Nicole, and thank you to everyone who entered our Quarantined in Toronto Superfan Contest. We had so many amazing entries, and I'm joined by our superfan, Maya, all the way from Sherwood Park, Alberta. How excited are you to be here today? Very excited. And you brought us this amazing artwork that features myself and Nicole, and then we have Samantha here and Jack Murray. This is amazing art. Thank you so Thank much you. for bringing yeah. it in. Mm -hmm. So you're a big fan, you must be, to, <laughs> yeah, to draw something like this for the show. And you have uh, questions for our yeah. cast, right? What was your first question? All right, so my first question was, I was wondering how you prepared for your role. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, they all have like so many tough scenes to film. So what's your second question? My second question is, why do you think the fans of Between love it so much? Ooh, that's a good one too. I know I love it because of the large ensemble cast. Now let's go over to Nicole for some answers from the cast. Thanks Angelina, thank you Maya. Maya, I love that art so much. Oh my gosh, I want a copy of it. I'm gonna put it up possibly like as an, I might wear it as a necklace. 
<laughs> not lying, I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So those are great questions, so let me just throw it out to you. So first of all, how did you prepare for your role, Loretta? Um, well, to be honest, I, from, the, from the audition to when I started shooting wasn't a whole lot of time, but before the audition I, I prepped, um, you know, the idea of computer hacker being very, very smart, you know, obviously learning all of your lines. But as far as getting ready for the show, I watched the entire first season uh, just to prep myself and like, you know, know about the characters and sort of see how Daisy fits into that world. Um, you know, where, yeah, it's just sort of like a puzzle piece with how she, how she fits in. Right, right, great. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, prep work for Stacy. Um, honestly, th one, of the, one of the things I found that really helped me with the character is I actually dropped my voice for the character. Um, just because she is a little bit more hard around the edges, she's, um, she's, I find, I was talking to my sister about this, I, I find she's one of the most um, damaged before the incident, before the virus was released characters on the show, that and Mark, which is why mm. I think they make such a great team. Um, so it kind of took a lot of delving into her backstory, which we did get into in season one. Um, but I just, I was a big fan of kind of like that whole sort of darker side of her. Like I, and I wasn't necessarily dead set on the fans loving Stacy. I just, she was kind of like a love to hate. Maybe she was, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. What did you do? Sorry. <laughs> 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 Moving on. <laughs> what did you do? Um, well, for the first season, uh, I was sort of working from the place of like Mark is this this caged animal when he's in prison, and then when he gets out, he's a bit of like the sort of wounded animal kind of on the loose. And I think that continued, but uh, something that allowed me to sort of get back into character after uh, you know a layoff was uh, just sitting in the chair. You know, I had hair like this, and then all of a sudden they just buzz it down and like just looking in the mirror and seeing like basically him instead of myself. It kind of like. Just allow, just put me right back into the, the pocket, so to speak. Oh, that's cool. And you say you changed your voice mm -hmm. and you changed your physical appearance. That's interesting how something that's a little bit more on the external side can help sort of inform yeah, the character. I got, a, I got a tip uh, from a fabulous acting coach of mine. Um, and he said sometimes even like a smell will, will kind of set you back into it. So something your character smells like. Like for me, it really helped being in a bar. It smells like whiskey and smoke and and leather jackets and for me that was always really helpful for dropping back into character because this, this is her home. That makes sense. Helpful. Yeah. For sure. Sure. And mm -hmm. for you it's true the, the shaved head looks so different on you. Yeah. Than yeah no it, I feel like a different person for real you know like yeah. uh, you just even the, the months when we're shooting I kind of like yeah, I see people kind of looking at me and they're, um, they're you know I'm a bit more intimidating and frightening than I am when I when I walk around like this. So. Huh that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh that's it those are good answers good question Maya. So on to her second question why do you think fans of Between love it so much. And I have to say, we actually just found out that it, Between is trending on Twitter in Brazil right now. No oh, way. wow. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Brazil, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. But, so why do you think that kind of response is, is part of, of this show's uh, zeitgeist? I think it's just like there's such a it's such a large cast and there's so many different characters and that in some way you find you find a way you find one character at least one character that you really identify with and it's like it's young it's sexy it's shot really beautifully like I think all, these are all factors that really play into it. Mm -hmm. How about you? I I'd say it's it's hitting a generation um, of viewers that hasn't really been touched on yet, which is kind of the four, like 14 plus um, and and a little bit higher. It's a bit more of a mature show. Um, and I also find, like, oh shoot, I had a great answer, now I've blanked. Um, <laughs> okay, come back to me, I'll, I, I'll, I'll get cool. it. Cool, what I'll do you think, Jack? Go. Uh, well, uh, the survivalist sort of aspect to it, um, I think is, you know, interesting. There's nothing, there's no higher stakes <laughs> than uh, survival, Yeah. you know, so uh, seeing, you know, young people in that situation, I think is what makes it such an interesting premise, you know? Sure. Because, uh, you know, they might think differently than, say, you know, more mature folks. Yeah, it's so interesting because of like because of their life experience, how they react to these uh, situations it will be different than how like you know a forty-five-year-old man, you know, like we have different stakes, you know, and then when the stakes are like raised so high, like yeah, it's really interesting to see how people survive in these very um, serious, intense, intense situations. Mm -hmm. Like, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And I think people like to live vicariously through, you know, what the, what these characters end up doing. Yeah. Did you think about what you were going to say? I just I was just going to say it moves so fast. It does. You don't have time to get bored. You're so you're constantly like watching like what? Okay, awesome and then you, it moves on. The plot moves so quickly. I think the reason people love it so much is because you when you're in it, you're watching it and you're just entranced with it for an hour and it's a complete escape from reality and I think that's kind of one of the reasons it's been so successful. 
Totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing to have like these young people who have sort of everything to live for, and then suddenly their whole context changes, and it's like you went from everything to live for to nothing to lose, mm -hmm. mm. right? Like it's life or death. So, so who cares if you have a relationship that's different than you might have had mm -hmm. if you had more time to think about it? Who cares if you have to break out of prison and take that risk, right? Like mm -hmm. you have to, you have to you kind have of to. make these extreme gestures mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you you have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. huh. All right, well, you know what? We have some really cool stuff on our website. One of the neat things we have is this really cool map of Pretty Lake. If you've ever wanted to know what exactly the town of Pretty Lake looks like from a bird's eye view, well, Angelina's gonna show you right about now. Thanks, Nicole. Now, first off, I wanted to share with you this artwork that I created for this week's episode featuring Wiley holding the cure with Liam standing behind her. You can see all of my pieces from previous weeks on social media. Now, want to delve in even deeper into the world of Between? Well, have I got a treat for you. Head over to citytv.com between and take a look at our brand new interactive map. Check out some of the different spots in Pretty Lake that have been featured in the series and learn a bit about each location. And don't forget to check back with us on social and tell us which spot is your favorite. Now, speaking of which, we've got some awesome fan comments that we'd like to highlight this week. At Seabass134 says, anyone who hasn't watched Between is missing out big time. Thanks, Seabass. We couldn't agree more. Our next comment comes to us from at Glitzy Butera on our Gord in Memoriam video. And they want to say, I want Gord back so bad that video makes me upset. I feel you. It's too real. And finally, so many of you commented telling us who you got in our Between Profiler quiz. If you haven't taken it yet, head on over to citytv.com slash between to find out who you most align with from Pretty Lake. I got Gord when I took it, of course. Nicole, what did our cast get when they took it? Oh, good question. Have you all taken the quiz? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jack, mm -hmm. who were you? I got Mark, you know, but <laughs> I don't know, perhaps like, you know, maybe I was kind of, you know, going along the, the, the answer trail to sort of get that result. So. Did you feel like you were answering as Jack or as Mark? You know, it's it's such a it's a blur between the two. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, there is no difference between us. So. Are you like Mark, do you think? I am Mark. Ooh. Ooh. Are you though? Because Mark does a bunch of things that I feel like. No, yeah, no, no, but uh, I guess we're different, but uh, there, there's a lot to them. You guys them. look the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? You yeah, look we, really we look, similar. Yeah, we do look scary. similar. Yeah, yeah. I like that though. I like that there's a sort of holistic, like the character and the man are one. Well, I feel like, you know, we, we, we behave the same, sort of. You know, I think Mark is trying to do the right thing mo most of the time. I think he's just like, his experiences are just so messed up that he's like, his his perspective is you know kind of skewed. So he ends up in situations that I, I usually don't find myself in. Thank goodness, those are not fun situations. No. How about you? Have you taken it? Adam, you were Adam. Why I do you that? Adam, is? I think because all my answers kind of revolved around like, yeah, I'll take charge. I'll do it if I have to get out. Let's do this. Let's go. Somebody figure it out. Somebody has to figure it out, and that's kind of where. I went on my trail. Yeah. yeah. Adam. <laughs> Are you like that in real life? Do you feel like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I answered pretty truthfully. It took me a long time to answer it. Um, you do have a good natural sort of leadership personality. I've observed that's really that. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think I had, uh, I think I went more so down the panic route, though. Like, if something was, <laughs> if something was seriously wrong, like, yes, okay, I'll do it if nobody else is going to do it. And um, there was that one question um, where he said uh, that he was what would you do? Oh, shoot. Do you remember the fifth question? It was the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, a while ago. Okay, again, I think I'm gonna have to pass and remember. You guys can come back. Okay. I'll remember it. Give me a sec. All right, all right. How about you? Um, I got Stacy, actually. What? what? Yeah, I got Stacy. Why is that? I don't know. I guess I was answering these questions because it was like, you know, whether you're a leader or a follower. And I'm like, I'm kind of not one or the other. It's somebody that I feel like Stacy sort of like, she's got, she's on her track. She's doing everything that she needs to do to survive, but also like, ready to jump at that opportunity to like, you know, to sort of um, get herself out as much as she can. And like, there is a conscience there, but there is like, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just conflict. It's definitely a conflict of back and forth between like doing the right thing and doing what you need to do to stay alive. Right, yeah, because sometimes the thing that's the most beneficial for other people in this situation is not really what's gonna help you yourself yeah. in the best. I took the quiz too, 
I was Adam. You got Adam too? I was Adam too, I'm just okay. like you. And I, I think I chose a lot of the answers that were about, like I would research and I would try to like expose the story. I would definitely- That was the question, that was the fifth question. I yeah. would want the. I would want it to be known that the government is doing this conspiracy mm -hmm. and they're trying to kill a bunch of teenagers. I would definitely try to leak that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't really imagine in real life being brave enough to put together like a, a video that exposes yeah. a government conspiracy. I feel like that really paints a target on your back. So that's a level of bravery that I don't know that I personally have, but I'd like to think that I would. Mm. Do you feel like you could do that? Make the video? Yeah. Yeah. Because you feel like get... I could. I feel like I would I feel like I would make the video. Oh I like that. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to. And nobody else is, so here we go. It's true. Mm. It's true. Mm -hmm. So okay, well I wanna just take a second before we move on in the show because a show like this happens because there are so many people who work on it. If you were in the studio tonight, you would see 30 people behind the scenes who are helping to make this happen. So I just wanted to take a little moment to say thank you to everybody who works on the show. We have our whole floor crew, we have our control room crew, we have an art department, we have editors, we have amazing producers, oh my goodness. Uh, who else? There's the beauty department, there's the graphic designers, all of these people who, maybe I've forgotten some and I hope I haven't, but all of their talents come together to make this show come together out of nothing every week. It is remarkable to see. And we have such a strong leadership team who's steering the ship and giving the kind of feedback that really helps us to improve and move forward every week. And it is a delight. So I just wanted to let you all know when you're watching the show and you see that credit roll at the end, every single one of those people has, has brought a tremendous level of talent and professionalism to this game and it is such a pleasure. And so I just wanted to recognize them all because I know sometimes you know those credits just kind of go by in a blur, but I just want you to know that like every single one of those people has brought their A-game and has brought something special to this show. So thank you all. You're all wonderful. Thanks. Yay. <laughs> So now I want to take us back in time and check out what happened on the set of Between Season 2 with a little segment that we like to call On Set with Jim. Like, does Franny have a darkness to her, especially now after Gord's gone? I feel that she does have a little bit of darkness because yeah. she wants revenge, of course, So, right. and she gets it. Yeah. Franny comes and she discovers me. She's actually looking uh, for me because she th she's blaming me for Gord's death. So I tell, uh, tell Franny I'm going to make things right and uh, I'm going to try to avenge Gord's death. Wow. Yeah. So that's like you almost take, now you're like put in this new role of almost like big brother again. Well, hey, I have that note on my script. I feel like I am really searching for a family because I really like being with people and ha I'm feeling like, I, uh, like I'm like i needed. The characters, Tracy and Stacy, have a kind of a dilemma of do they stay or do they go with the kids? How would you deal with that situation? No. Personally, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to leave. Mm -hmm. um, just, I, I love kids, so that's the thing. Stacy, not so much, doesn't really love the kids. Just was like, no, nah, we're gonna move on. No, honestly, honestly, uh, she was just, it was a survival thing, and yeah. you can stay and die, or you can go and live, and if you go outside, you might have an opportunity to, to do something about it, but in here, you're slowly going to starve to death. But you decide stay with your kids. to stay. And now, where does that stem from? Is it from the loss of board? Is it from the respect for him? Like, where yeah, does that? Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a bit of both. I think Tracy maybe at one point felt abandoned and left, mm -hmm. and she knows what that feels like. I think she sees it in the kids and doesn't want them to die because she left. If there's yeah. a chance they can live because she stays, maybe the only thing that's giving her that feeling of of worth is staying with the kids. You, you contact this character, Daisy, right? I think that's really cool. And what's, what's Daisy like? Like, what does she kind of bring to the show? She's able to help Adam hack into uh, the system and, and find out information about uh, Horatio Pharmaceuticals and uh, Minister Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, and he couldn't do it on his own, so she was able to really help him. My character is actually not from Pretty Lake. My character is from the outside world. It's a surprise. She hasn't heard from him in years, and so it's definitely uh, a big surprise for him to be reaching out to her, but it's also exciting, because it's like, oh, well, he's gonna reach out to me. What does he want? Adam meets Dexter Crane. He's like the top of the food chain. Are you in over your head? Should Adam run? I don't think Adam should run. I think Adam should face Dexter Crane head on, because I think he's it's sort of, again, I think Adam's the only person with a chance to face him, because nobody else would even have it, could even have a dialogue with him, because they wouldn't know what his angle is. Welcome all, we have a very exciting game for you today called Junk in the Trunk. 
Oh, look at his little face. Aww. In episode five, we see Adam locking Liam in the trunk of his car. So now it's your job to get him out. The rules of this game are very simple. Each of you has a container just above your <clears throat> trunk full of ping pong balls, which represent Liam. So you aren't allowed to use your hands. You have to dance and jump and twist and move in order to get all of the ping pong balls out of your trunk to free Liam. So whoever frees him first wins. Now, excuse me if I'm a little cheeky, but I think this game will help us all get to the bottom of this Liam drama. Jack, are you, are you cracking under the pressure? I might have cracked <laughs> already. It's almost too late. Right. It's serious. <laughs> serious. Okay, Loretta. Serious game here. I'm glad you're taking it so seriously. It is. It's very serious. <laughs> Loretta, we like. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. We bummed we haven't had you on mm -hmm. sooner. Do you think that being a newcomer is going to be like an advantage against these two? Yeah, I think beginner's luck for sure. I think that might be to your advantage because we've seen in other episodes that being a newcomer has actually worked sometimes. So we'll see. <laughs> Samantha, I don't want to make any assumptions. <laughs> But mm. I think you might have a good shot at winning this game. You have a good track record. I do. Do you yes. agree? I feel like I, I feel like this might be my chance though to to come in and school Jack finally. Mm. There's a rivalry happening mm -hmm. here. I can just tell. Okay, are you guys ready? Yep. You ready to do this? Let's go. Okay. Let's do it. On your mark, get set, go. Oh We're my off gosh. to a great start. Sam has quite, Loretta has quite a few of them. Get Jack is not fight. doing so well. Loretta, Wait. let's see how you're doing. Yep. Okay, you have like three left, yep. I think. Yeah. Jack has two. Sam, how are you doing one. over there? I think I have one. <laughs> oh yeah, there's definitely one in there. Make it happen, you guys. It's a close call. Oh, Loretta, let's see, let's see. I don't hear oh, anything. I can't get this there's, last no, one. there's no ping pong in Loretta's yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Loretta won, but let's see who, who can come in the run run. Wait! Let's see, let's is, see. Is it gone? There's no balls in your trunk. <laughs> you yeah. did it! Let's, is there a... I think one, uh, there's like some kind of tape in mine. You know, there's like... Look at this. Cheating. I'm gonna put that back in. Cheating. He's sad, he misses you. All right, well, we have some amazing prizes. Loretta, oh, since yeah. first place. You're the winner. You get this amazing... Cannibal. Can. Amazing. This should keep me alive food. for a while. Yeah, I think so too. And Sam, since you were the, the runner up, I really would like to give you this Thank wonderful you. prize. Thank you so much. I wonder what it is. Any parting word? Like speech? Speech? Speech. Speech. Yeah, speech. Um, <laughs> I feel like this will, uh, I won't be giving this to the children as uh, Stacy is not very fond of the children, I guess. That's so lovely. I'm going to keep this for me. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> fine. That's beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. Beautiful now, moving. let's head back in time to the set of Between for Jim's segment, Between Us. Between Us. Uh -huh. These are tough questions with Jim Watson. You got Ronnie, you got Chuck, mm -hmm. you got Mark. Well, then give me a one, two, three. I want rankings. <gasps> yeah. Oh. yeah. We really are going to start asking more about Jesse. It's okay. going to get very personal later. <laughs> I have the Twitter and all that. She twits. I, I, I twit. It was a very emotional scene. Yeah. He gets shot and everything. He's on the ground. We're blocking. I'm ready for my emotion until Ryan decides to say, Simba, remember me. <laughs> I want a shot of you. I want a shot of you holding, holding Jason up. <laughs> I start to laugh. Ruining the moment, no emotion. Because you are easily next to me, the second most loved character. On this easily. Show. Easily. So we're going to move away from Gord because I'm done talking about him. Great. <laughs> <laughs> me too. The scenes are always awkward. They're just, I mean, it looks like to the viewer that they're these wonderful intimate scenes, but really there's there's 17 people watching you and you're yeah not wearing any clothes. And so it's, if you to could just right. do a little thrusting, yeah. that would be great. <laughs> so I think she has a lot of, a, a lot invested in Liam. Uh, and doesn't want him killed for a multitude of reasons. I'm really proud I just used the word <laughs> multitude with a hand flourish and a for a multitude, multitude of reasons. She's like, uh, I should read the scripts and then I'll know the story. Shh. <laughs> shh, don't rot out on me none. <laughs> okay, between yeah, us, like I, good. between us. <laughs> I literally just said between us. That's my I was line. like, <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Okay, so 
Wow, I don't even, was filming those scenes really awkward, those intimate scenes? It's, yeah, it's pretty awkward. And like, mm. I, I gave the tame version of that um, to Jim. You were struggling watching I that was, even. I, I went, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> so intense. Um, but yeah, it's even worse than that. Like, it's just, like, there's I mean. There's so many people in the room. I know, there's like, there's like 10 people in the room and you're like half clothed and they're like, if you could just grind your hips back and forth. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, your, your boob is showing. If you could just, Jack, can you just cover that up? It's awful. It's not true it's love. It's not movie magic, folks. guys. <laughs> so while Stacey and Mark are getting it on, <clears throat> uh, Adam has been out trying to get to the bottom of this conspiracy, which leads us to our Twitter poll for this week. Will Adam be able to spread the truth? And thank you for being my fan of, uh, spread the truth and save Pretty Lake. So 65% of you said, heck yes, he will save the day. 16% of you said he'll spread the truth about Pretty Lake, but he won't make it. He's going to get offed. And 19% of you said, nope, he's in trouble. Ooh. So people are pretty divided on whether or not he'll make it. Do you think that people are right to be skeptical of Adam's ability to save Pretty Lake? I'm like, really glad that they're optimistic. I mean, yeah, they seem optimistic. Like most about people it. are optimistic, but that's only 65%. Um, I think the people of Pretty Lake are not very optimistic. Yeah. Um, maybe the ones with the cure? Are. He's got a good. Right? I mean, he's got a good track record that he's just gonna keep trying anyway. Yeah. Unless he does. He's gonna get keep off. going until everyone dies. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh. It's got dark and sad. Well, Sorry. hopefully, Pretty Lake will make it through with or without Adam's help. Don't miss next week's season finale of Between on City at 8 p.m. Eastern Pacific, or set your PVR to find out if they make it. And speaking of next week's finale, we have a very special sneak peek. I just wish that we had Jack here to tell us about it. Oh, hi, Jack. Hey there. Oh. How you doing? I'm good. How I'm are just you? Just sitting here, hanging out. I, I what have... are you guys up to? You forgot that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you introduce the clip for us? Yes. Well. Okay. This clip. I don't quite remember. Oh yes. What is it? Oh, so uh, Ronnie and Mark go uh, toe to toe. And remember, Mark's injured. So I mean, you know, it might look like Ronnie's winning, but you know, he, Mark's at a disadvantage. Just saying that. And also, this might be uh, might be the end of Mark. So, uh, are you allowed to say that? Just tune in. Let's take a look at the clip. <laughs> Back off! I'm just getting started. Come on! Stop it! I got Aaron's killer in here! Come on! I should kill you right now! What the hell's going on? You wanted me to find Eric's killer? Here he is. I swear it was an accident. Let me explain. Shut up! No! Let him talk. He came at me with a knife. I was just trying not to get slashed. He fell into the knife. That's what killed him. I saw his body. His stomach was torn open. That doesn't happen from falling. I swear that's the truth. Now you're going to pay. Hand him over. OK, let me do it for you. Please, let me do it to make things right, please. Don't do it. Ronnie! Ah. Do you think that he'll feel relief when the truth comes out next week? When the truth comes out? Yeah, he's been found out. I think so. Good. <laughs> That's what you wanted all along. Yeah, though, right? absolutely. Like you've been trying to get out of the, the closet, trying to get out of the bar to tell everybody, the and now closet. it's finally out. The closet. You did put him I in put there. I put you in the closet. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even sorry. I'm sorry. Well, you know, I got just, out of the closet. He's just flabbergasted because he has his special, his special little ping yes. pong ball there. Yeah. The, the lone ball. The lone ball. I think it's a really nice boot in you. Yeah, yeah I think pretty. it looks nice on you. Yeah, I might, I might keep it. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys have your special prizes here, too. Show yeah. offs, right? <laughs> These guys. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us on tonight's episode of Inside Between. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the fans? Um, thanks for having me. Hope you guys watch. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. It was a pleasure I don't, I don't having know what happens you. yet. So, oh, it's, yeah, 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 it'll be exciting for you yeah, to watch, yeah, yeah. too. What about you, Sam? Um, next week's pretty intense, so make sure mm. you tune in um, and I honestly read every single tweet you guys send at me so keep them coming oh nice and Jack yeah yeah you know yeah, yeah. keep keep tweeting at me you know I read them and I'm you know I'm quite liberal with my my likes and my retweets <laughs> wow if you just say Jack you, you know, might get a, you might you might get get a, a retweet like. and a like if it's very really very generous yeah. of you wonderful <laughs> <laughs> so thanks again okay so don't forget our season finale of between is next week at 8 p.m eastern pacific on city don't forget to set your pbrs and of course let's follow by 
our season finale of Inside Between at 9 p.m. right here. In the meantime, you can still watch all of our episodes, our webisodes, featurettes, and more on cdtv.com slash between right now. So join us next week for more Inside Between. Bye! Bye, guys. <laughs>